So what I want to show you is how we use Enterprise Architect to conduct our story mappings and this really helps us to identify the relationships within our stories and uh, probably more importantly the dependencies and this also helps us to map out, helps the product team and product owner to map out uh, what the how the backlog will take shape as far as understanding dependencies but then also being able to create a, mo a roadmap for the product management group. Enterprise Architect is does have an integration with Visual Studio. Unfortunately, uh, it, it is only current up to 2010, so they have not made the upgrade to 2012 yet. Once you bring up Enterprise Architect, you need to go into View, uh, Project Browser, and come over to the panel on the right here. This is our uh, major project. We have two sub-projects within it, and we're going to go into Portico and look at the Portico requirements. Now this will give us the overall landscape of our project, and as you can see, uh, it's quite a spider web of, of different things. Uh, it does show relationships. And what is uh, most important is this is really meaningful to the product owner. It helps him to keep everything uh, in perspective, understand uh, where the dependencies are, and like I said, that helps him to map out how things will go into the backlog and how to build his product roadmap. And over here you can see on the left that we have these diagram filters and right now there's no filter applied and you can come in and start applying filters and it basically filters out everything except for what you're asking for. So in this case I'm looking for all activity, all stories that are in Sprint 4. I can add in Sprint 5, add in Sprint 6. Um, I can look just at certain uh, project platforms let me take all these out here. So now if I just want to see stories that are related to our area called Granite or area called Keystone, uh, I can bring up those those uh, stories as well. Now the way we use this is these large boxes represent user stories. These are really UI stories and the little boxes represent the system stories. So the arrows will explain the dependency. So this box right here uh, is Portico. Portico is our, is our user uh, story or our, our user platform. And this particular story is add comment. And this, uh, this story over here is add comment response. So this is for adding a comment to a digital document. So the predecessor here is the update via messaging and the presser predecessor to that story is Keystone Portadoc API Write View, which has a predecessor all the way back to the uh, ultimate dependency here is V6, which is our database, Portadoc Schema. So that first has to be created. Um, so as we're, as we're putting together the stories in the sprint, we know that we, we have to do this one uh, before this one, before this one, before this one and then finally before this one. Now this doesn't mean that we uh, work them sequentially but we do understand what has to be in place for the next piece to to come fully together. Now in this case uh, I'm going to uh, filter just on Sprint 4 and this shows all the items that are in Sprint 4 and you can see that they are uh, color-coded in green. I can zoom in and there are a few others here on the board. So here's one down here. And this is uh, interactive filters. So we want to be able to apply interactive filters to our screen. And if you see here, these are, this is uh, acting because of the arrow, you can see that it's acting as a predecessor to, and I'm going to click on the Sprint 5 filter here. So now these are Sprint 5. So this is a uh, a, uh, we know that this has to be done because this is a filter, this is a predecessor for stories that are in Sprint 5. So the reason that this is important is because 
when we look at what's mapped out, and if we have to start entering into a negotiation of what uh, is in or out of a sprint, you know, this has a downstream dependency that is very important. As we look at uh, these other stories here, not necessarily so. Uh, I mean, these are important things to do, but these might not be uh, critical path features like this one down here. Now, if I click on, you see the hover over, I can just hover over this and it tells me a little bit of information. If I double click on it, uh, the box opens up and I can fill this with all kinds of information. Um, this is where I drive the information that will tell me, uh, for example, if it's what sprint it's in and we use the status to identica identicate um, what functionality in the project um, that, that this lies in. And uh, there's a lot more we could use. We don't. Again, we're just trying to understand and show dependencies uh, between stories and how they relate to each other. All right, so that's really about it. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, the tool is a lot more powerful than uh, what I'm showing we use it for. But just for the sake of being able to capture the uh, mapping of our stories and show relationships so we can understand dependencies, uh, it does a great job for us. If we wanted to use this for epics, then certainly we would have an epic uh, that would break down into stories and then features and you could see very similar uh, how, how you'd be able to use this for that purpose.